Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. These shows are brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, as well as the Compassionate Friends. Well, we've got a great guest today, Heidi. Uh, we're going to be talking about grief that changes, and this is a woman who's had loss and talks about the changes that it's made in her life, and uh, she's a wonderful artist, so I'm excited to have her on. You want to introduce her? Sure, I'd love to, Mom. Uh, so as you said, we're going to be introducing, um, we're going to be talking with Deborah DeLisi today. And Deborah is a mother, artist, and author whose life was plunged into shock and despair when her seemingly happy 29-year-old daughter, Kate, ended her life. Uh, she has written the book, Life Quakes, and speaks to, which speaks to all of us of the intimate journey of grief and how to walk alongside fear and pain on the road to healing. And mom, she is also the founder of the Abundant Love Project. Um, this is a worldwide community offering random acts of kindness. So welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you, and hello, Dr. Heidi and Dr. Gloria. Thank you for having me. It's great having you on. Now, where are you located? I'm in San Diego in Southern oh, California. Love San Diego, one of my favorite places. And Heidi's in Arizona, and I'm in California, but Palo Alto. More oh, further. okay. Yeah, so the power of the internet. Yeah, I well, know, I love how that works to bring everyone together. Yeah, and it's so wonderful because uh, I've been able to think about you, look at your fabulous art and, and your card decks that you've done and, uh, and your uh, videos and all the amazing things you've done. And I wanna talk to you about that work and how you got there and what you were doing before and that kind of thing. Now, I know, uh, let's start out a little bit back in Life Quakes because you're talking about some of your journey things and one of them was your divorce, right? Yeah, after my divorce, you know, you're, it's a life quake. You're thrown into this uh, world of being two parents in one and uh, kind of two breadwinners in one also. You know, I had a home, a mortgage, and two young children, two girls to take care of. So that was a big life quake. Um, you, you question a lot of things when you go through a divorce, you know, mm -hmm. as far as personally, success, failure, all that. Been a grieving process. Yes. Definitely, because, you know, when you fall in love, it's very magical and it's forever and there's hopes and dreams. And when it all falls apart, you kind of, you know, ask yourself, you know, what happened? How did it happen? Uh, who am I now? Mm -hmm. Right. It, it is like the death of a marriage. It is absolutely that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, how many years ago was that? The divorce was a uh, ways back, uh, probably about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. And so you picked up and moved to California? I did. I came out wow. west. You know, wow. I figured if I'm going to struggle, I'm going to struggle in paradise. That's nice. <laughs> where were you, Deborah? When what you, was that? When you picked up and moved, where were you? Where were you living? Oh, I was living in New Hampshire. Okay, so you really went far. I went far and drastically different. I decided I was giving up snow uh -huh. and bubbling. I had done that plenty. And I said, if I'm going to, you know, try and refigure out my life, I'm going to do it in a place that's very paradise-like because the surroundings are so pretty. I uh -huh. thought that that's got to be helpful in some way. And it was. Now, um then you move to San Diego, where you are now. That is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, you know, what they say about the sunshine, the good weather here, it's all true. And then you had two daughters. And in the past, what, four years, your daughter took her life, Kate? Yeah, she did three and a half years ago. So my daughters, Sarah and Kate, had been living out here with me, each of them, you know, at various times um, as they got older. And uh, Kate had been staying with me in 2012, 2013. And it was in uh, 2013 that she decided she was going to relaunch her life. And she was going to go to the place that she loved most in uh, North Carolina in the mountains. Mm. And it was with a lot of positive energy and, and good hopes for her future that, uh, you know, we, I put her on the train to go out there. And then it was 11 months later when I had the biggest life quake, the biggest shock and the biggest journey through grief anyone can go through. Mm -hmm. The loss of your beautiful daughter. She was yeah. a horticulturist, did I read somewhere? 
Yeah, she loved plants. She loved, uh, <laughs> she was, ethnobotany was her specialty. So native plants. Wow. So not so much landscaping, but all the native plants who are here originally and using them in a, a beautiful way for your landscaping. And that was her specialty. Wow. Well, so sorry to hear about that about her loss. Now, let's talk about your art in connection with all of this. Before you moved to Cal, have you always been an artist? I have. You know, when you think about, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? That was my answer from the time I was four years old, five years old. I'm going to be an artist. And then that's what I am. Now, I noticed that you're, you have an amazing uh, video online, which is really fun to see where you're doing a Buddha that you saw in Nepal, and you speed it up so that people can see how, how you do your art. Move over to the side a little bit so people can see uh, the picture oh, there that you've got of some of your fantastic there's art. There's one, and uh, the Buddha is, uh, where is it? There. Oh, you can't see. Oh, wow. It's in the background back there. Okay. I love it. Well, fantastic. Now, what I wanted to ask you, that I know a lot of people that are watching this show are wondering how you've gotten through a suicide of a daughter and uh, also, you know, getting through the divorce, the whole thing. But you must have some kind of a spiritual aspect doing a Buddha picture going to Nepal. You know, the spiritual journey, I can trace that back to another uh, life quake, as I call it. And that was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2001. Wow. And, um, you know, my girls were in, uh, one was just starting college, one was in high school, and uh, I was, like I said, the single parent, and, you know, I, I was told I had breast cancer, and that shook everything, and I couldn't understand why, because I was growing organic vegetables, I, I drank well water that came right out of the ground outside my house, I lived in New Hampshire, full of fresh air. So what part of that equation makes you get cancer? Oh. So I started looking at, at spiritual answers for that. You know, why, why does things like this happen? And it kind of, well, you know, when you go through some big shift like that, it, it puts you at a crossroads in your life and you have to kind of decide which way you're going to go. And I kind of chose to look at it from a, a big picture point of view. Mm -hmm. Well, I know New Hampshire, people might be surprised to know, but New England and up in that area, there are a lot of very spiritual people and, and a lot going on up in that er area. I think people think about California as being, you know, the place where there's a lot like Ohio and those kind of places, but there's a lot up in New Hampshire, isn't there? There is. There absolutely is a lot of a spirituality, spiritualism going on up there. And so I started going to workshops and, and learning about that. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where you just dive in and the more you know, the more you want to know. Um, and so my, my art took a turn. You know, I went to a workshop on, on uh, DNA and pineal glands. It was kind of half scientific and half esoteric. And from that, I started uh, doing this, uh, the art of the pineal gland, the pineal tones. And, and that has evolved. I still do that. But it was after my daughter Kate died that I completely stopped doing my art. They were all the color drained out of my life at that well, point. That's, that's interesting because I, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, she's, you know, moved <laughs> into this area because of her daughter Kate. But then now you're saying that, that it drained out. It drained out because I decided, you know, my two daughters, I always consider them my most, uh, my masterpieces, my most beautiful creations were my, my two girls. Mm -hmm. And when I lost Kate, I decided I don't want to create anymore. I don't think I have it in me. What I loved was destroyed, was taken from me. She left. Um, I don't think I can create anymore. And that's when I started writing in a journal. And the pages were, uh, it was like brown paper journal with, with a black pen. And I just started, I, I call them doodles. Um, they're kind of sketches where I would, I would write what was inside of me, like, grief is love that has no destination or my my love for you is like a waterfall that has no ground to catch it i would have these thoughts in my head and i would kind of draw a picture to go along with that and write the words and that's that was the most i could do at that time wow and those things are in your book 
they're in the book Life Quakes. It's, it's part story and part pages from that journal um, that I was describing just now. And I, I love that you did this, Deborah, because I feel like the idea when someone's had a death of writing in a journal can be really daunting. And like you're saying, you just sat and put little quotes and little things that came up. You didn't put a lot of pressure on yourself. No, I didn't. And it was like, I wanted to get words out of me. I had these thoughts, these feelings inside of me and I wanted to get them out, but I didn't want to talk to people. Yeah. That was painful. It was because people, the first thing they say and they mean so well is, how are you? How are you doing? Right. And you're like, I don't even want to answer that question. And, so and, that, I, and it's so complicated. It's, it's, it's like, how do, you answer, how do you answer it? I mean, it's, it's such a complicated question after a death. It is so complicated. There's all the feelings, mm -hmm. you know, there's, and love is mixed in with those feelings yeah. as well as the grief and the, the sadness and, and anger and all the other. So the journal was very helpful. And it was actually when I was going through my daughter's belongings that I found these blank journals. She loved to doodle and do things. Um, but a lot of times she would buy journals and then never end up <laughs> writing in them. Mm -hmm. So I found one of her blank journals and I was like, you know what? This is going to become my journal. Oh, that's cool. From that journal, I'll just quickly say that from uh, walking on the beach and expressing sadness and et cetera, you know, I wasn't afraid to cry everywhere. I used to pick up stones and those stones, I would draw hearts on the front of them and I would write, you are loved on the back and leave those for people to find because I thought everybody somewhere is having a, a bad moment. And mm -hmm. so if you can leave this stone for someone to find with a lovely little note, uh, it will pick up somebody's day. Um, and that's how the Abundant Love Project started. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, I actually started to feel like I was helping people. And when you feel like you're helping somebody, it kind of uplifts you a little bit and gives you, uh, makes your steps a little bit lighter and you're able to actually take a step from there. And, um, and from that, I started uh, drawing again. I started deciding, okay, well, maybe I can paint. Maybe I don't have to stop painting. And so I started painting again. And uh, was last, the very first time. Do you remember uh, preparing, picking up the brush? Yeah, I, paper. I do. And I, I remember, it was, you know, it's, it felt familiar and foreign at the same time. But it also felt like this is me. And even though my daughter's gone, I can't stop being myself. I can't stop living. Um, I'm here. And, and she's not, and she'll always be a part of me, but I have to keep living. My biggest fear after my brother Scott died is that something was gonna happen to my parents, that they were gonna have a health crisis, that they were gonna die, that they were gonna leave me. And you are doing such a service to your surviving daughter right now by yeah. living your life and taking care of yourself. So thank you for doing that from all the brief siblings out there. And I realized that as much as I, I might want to, you know, just fall into a heap on the floor, that that would actually create an extra burden for Sarah. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and she now lives on the opposite coast from me. And I want her to have a good life. I want her to have a beautiful life. Right. Um, and so I, I don't want to become that. Um, to her. I want, I want her to see that, yes, we both can, can keep moving forward. Okay, so talk about the Abundant Love Project. It's a completely open project, and um, people can buy stones or pick one up on the beach or a river rock, and you can, uh, it's on Facebook. Uh, just look for the Abundant Love Project, and it's an open project. I have people in all different countries around the world, making them, leaving them. I have the notes that you can download from the Facebook page in different language and the notes tell people that um, you have a gift to give this world. Here's a gift for you. You have a gift to give this world in return. And I hope that knowing this brings a smile to your face. And in doing so, um, just know that you are loved and, and by a random stranger. You know, you don't have to do anything. It's, you don't have to do anything to be loved. You're just loved. That's it. Uh, well, I love that comment, don't you, Hyde? 
Absolutely. Yes. You can, like you said, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You don't have to earn it. It's yeah. just there. Well, you can find me on uh, deliciart.com. That's my website, my website. And I'm um, on Facebook, Deborah Delisi. And I just, just uh, my books are on Amazon. You can find me there. Okay. Uh, Life Quakes. And my other one is called I Will Find You Everywhere. Well, Deborah, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're an amazing person. Oh, well, likewise. And thank you, Dr. Heidi, Dr. Gloria, for having me. Thank you so much, Deborah. And, and Kate lives on through all the work that you are doing to change the world. Thank yeah. you for being a guest on our show. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching the show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours till you find your own. And God bless.